Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are checking out the Rafale M. I hope I say that right. Unfortunately it is a French aircraft and I am typically very terrible about saying those kind of things but either way today we're going to check it out. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right. Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is going to be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023. Uh, again, in Houston, Texas, the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas, and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight simming experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's gonna be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. Okay, you guys, so this is a completely freeware project. Now, this was something that is found on flightsim.to. A link to it will be down in the description below if you guys are interested in downloading this aircraft. This originated, is my understanding, as an FSX port. However, many of the um, graphics, textures, performance, numbers, configuration, things like that have been updated to meet Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 standards. Now, the aircraft, as you can see, has already started up. We're sitting here on the runway. Um, and uh, the idea behind that is that it's a very simple aircraft. You know, you're not going to find a fully modeled cockpit with all the full integrations, buttons, switches, etc. It's meant to be something that's just fun to fly around, guys, especially with all the different military aircraft that we have currently in the U.S. side of things, such as the F-15, the F-18, the Tomcat, the Harrier. You know, this is a nice way of, you know, offering some variants to that to fly with your buddies, especially if you don't want to purchase one of those military aircraft. You have that option as well to do something a little bit different. So today we're just going to check it out in the aspect of having a good time with the new jet and just seeing what it's all about. This aircraft's actually been out for quite a while and uh, I've been holding off testing because typically those kind of ports, they take a while before you can actually really give them a good rundown and, and what they're offering. And uh, I remember in the initial stages, they had quite a few issues and I, I don't want to put down any developers like that. And not that I ever mean to, but um, again, a link to this will be down in the description below if you guys are happy with what you see and the performance of it. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in the cockpit and uh, we're going to get airborne and check it out. And uh, it's, again, very, very simple. Like I said, if you mouse over anything, you can see that there's a few that are functional, but not many. Um, so that's why I didn't worry about going through all the cockpit features, things like that. Looks like it's got the recorder chart. Oh, actually, that's a nice power pan, looks like. Yep, so your standard startup equipment. It's kind of cool. It's got this hatch to it. I didn't even realize that. Definitely steals plenty of work that has been done on it, and it makes it a fun little aircraft. Looks like it's running a standard Garmin um, avionics suite, which we've all seen before, obviously, plenty of times. I'm going to go ahead and set our barometric pressure here just to make sure that we are on board here. And let's make sure that that's set. Yeah, it looks like it did. Okay. I do like the side stick configuration of any of these types of aircraft. Um, it just, I actually fly side stick here. I don't use, unfortunately, most of my general aviation equipment anymore. Um, so it's really nice to see it when it's actually matching my configuration. But uh, I like the details. I like the texture work. I think it's a, a very pretty looking aircraft. Uh, the mirrors, I can't tell if they're really modeled or just sort of doing a general repeat of the environment. Either way, still a very nice touch. And again, for a completely free aircraft. Now, the one thing I am not sure on is parking brake. I don't read French. Um, which I have absolutely no problem with it being 
in French. It is a French aircraft. It should be. Uh, da -da -da -da. But I'm trying to see what would a parking brake look like on this thing here. Wow, is that the throttle? Whoa, look at that. I've never seen that kind of a configuration for a throttle. That's interesting. I didn't even check that. Like, it like did not process that that was more like a, a side stick. That is interesting. I'm wondering how ergonomic and, and different that would be for, for example, an American pilot to switch over to something like that, because obviously way different than the uh, kind of throttle assembly that we use. That's very interesting. And I'm sitting here like trying to mimic it in my actual hand right now, what that would be like pushing like that versus what we're used to. I, I can't decide if that would get uncomfortable or not. That is so awkward. Uh, but yet at the same token, I feel like that would open up some ergonomics. Interesting. All right, well, either way, let me see if I can figure out the parking brake here because this is not going well. Mm -hmm. uh, can I release the parking brake? Okay, I think I got it from my class echo. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. We're a little too close. And let's start adding some power. Oh, here we go. All right, airspeed comes live instantly. We're going to go full power here. I like the sounds. 130 knots, we're already lifting. I'm pulling back. Okay, there she goes. Gear coming up. And let's see what she looks like, shall we? Very responsive aircraft. Let's turn it around here. Just gonna roll it over. I like the afterburners. The afterburners look pretty good. Those are actually really good afterburner textures. Let's see what it looks like looking down at yes. It's a nice bright heat there. Guys, that's pretty good. Look at that. That's actually kind of impressive. I'm I'm okay with this. Out a little bit here. Huh, nice. See her pushing 430 knots there. Very touchy aircraft, which, again, I have no problem with it. Definitely fly by wire. I'm just sort of doing 16th, 16th turns here. Let's grip it and rip it, shall we? Went through the cloud layer. I feel like I'm a little high in the cockpit, though. The HUD, very nicely done. I like the blue tint behind it. Makes it easy to see in just about all environments. Going up to the clouds on those white backgrounds, a little more difficult, but one of the better HUDs that I've seen yet. To be completely honest. Let's scare the cows and buzz the trees, shall we? You know what we're going to have to do again, guys? we got to find a... I want to get a group flight together to do the, um, the mock loop. Just pull a bunch of these aircraft together and just rip the loop. 500 knots, 500 feet. Very nice. This is really well done. Now, as as opposed to accuracy, things like that, I have no idea. So I'm not I'm not speaking to that. All I'm speaking to is this is it a fun aircraft to fly? That's all we're talking about today. And so far, it absolutely is. And the head disappearing like that, that's me sinking my head down like a dork, so I keep doing this. 
<laughs> I've been lazy with my track IR lately when I set it back up after a little hiatus. Hello. Uh, I was playing our Toby Eye Tracker, and so now what I've got done, going on is I've got Toby Eye Tracker on one monitor, and I decided to keep track IR for the flight sim. And that's not uh, any kind of preference. The biggest reason is because over, like, for example, where I'm going to be, I mentioned in a previous video that I'm going to be bringing American Truck Simulator back to the channel. Um, and maybe some other racing sims or things like that. I started putting my steering wheel to use. Um, I sort of was trying to figure out which one would be easier. And see, my flight sim cockpit right now doesn't have any kind of audio. Uh, the speakers are over on my, my production monitor, my main monitor. And so it's always been kind of awkward as far as audio for me. Uh, so I was like, well, if I have to wear headphones on the flight sim... Whoa, got some stuttering there. Got some major stuttering there. What the heck is this about? That was brutal. I'm getting screen tearing, so I don't think it's an FPS issue. This is SU-12 beta, of course, so, I mean, obviously there are still some issues that we're going to encounter. But anyway, I decided if I'm going to have to wear a headset anyway, uh, when I'm flight simming, then it doesn't make sense to keep the Toby Eye Tracker over here. So what I'm doing is I moved my Toby Eye Tracker over to... Uh, as far as my racing truck sim, whatever you want to call it, I have uh, a one of those uh, wheel stands where it sort of just folds up when you're done with it. You can set it off to the side. It's not a full dedicated sim rig. Um, so what I do is I just pull my office chair out of the way uh, from my primary monitor and set up my, my racing. And so I kept the Toby over there. So it wasn't because I didn't want to use it or anything anymore. I absolutely still use it. I like the vapors there. I'm brain farting what they're actually called, so... Any other day I would know it. It just... Had a brain fart, so right now they're vapors. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. It's like right on the tip of my tongue, and now I'm going to drive myself crazy with it. This is good. This is a very fun aircraft. Let's pull it back here. Slows down very quickly. Holy crap. Really slows down fast. That's kind of impressive. I wasn't expecting it to slow down quite that quickly. Especially without any kind of speed brake support or anything like that. I think it's just my sim that's being a pain in the butt right now, so I'm not going to worry about the stuttering too much. I'm sorry if you guys are seeing that. That's definitely not... I don't like that. Let me make sure it's not OBS. I'm going to stop and restart the recording. Okay, no, it doesn't seem to be OBS. It seems to be the sim, so it's obviously terrain. All right, well, there's our airport, or a airport, and I think we're going to land on it. Uh, let's see here. Let's get her down to about 200 knots, below 250. Flaps and slats work great. Look good. 165 knots now, I'm gonna bring the gear down. I see it. Losing sight of it. Now she doesn't bleed much speed in the way of banking, which I would expect it to. Let's see if we can actually trim her. To the E-bracket. Right about there. 
If I remember correctly, her angle of attack is close to that of the Hornet. Going too fast. AOA 6.7. I'm looking for about 8 degrees. Sinking too fast. Easy. Let's let it fly in. I probably should have picked a longer runway, but I think we're going to make it. Maybe not. Kind of. No. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, big gosh. Ah, I got so lucky with that. <laughs> That was pushing my luck. I probably should deploy the speed brake too, because I know it's got them. Anyways, this is actually a really fun aircraft. I've been really impressed with this. Uh, I really liked that the AOA indicator actually was working. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, as I was trimming, right about the middle of the E meet, met with the uh, velocity vector, or the flight path indicator, as many call it. Uh, we got to right around 8 degrees of uh, AOA. And like I said, if memory serves, this was all from memory and research that I've done this aircraft in the past, but I believe it has a similar angle of attack to that of the F-18 Hornet, which uh, landing on the Hornet is 8.1 degrees is what you're looking for at AOA. I could be mistaken, um, but either way, we landed. She landed well. Um, I was trying to do a little bit of aerodynamic braking and hold the nose up. Now, this is a naval aircraft. She's actually absolutely has a, a naval trap capability, so uh, we probably could have done that, and maybe we will at a later video. That'd be actually kind of fun to, to see what the naval traps are like in the various uh, naval aircraft that we have available for Microsoft Flight Simulator, especially now that that's becoming more of a, of a thing. So it's not that I'm against military aircraft in the simulator. I'm just against the release of ordnance in the simulator. Um, I just... I, and it's just because it's it's real world satellite imagery. I think that's just sort of I could see that being turned into something not okay. Uh, but as far as the overall performance and the things that you can do in military aircraft in the sim, I actually totally approve of air shows, air to air refueling, carrier traps, things like that. You know, uh, you know, flying in formation, uh, the mock loop. There's still plenty of things that you can do in this simulator that you can't in others. Now, Mach Loop is the only one that I mentioned, for example, there that you can't do in DCS, right? Uh, the Mach Loop isn't there. Uh, I think you can do Star Wars Canyon, but I can't remember, honestly. Um, but uh, so things like that is what the simulator truly brings. And then being able to do like, for example, get some buddies together, do an air show in your hometown or something, that'd be really neat too. Uh, so it is really cool that they bring the military aircraft in there. I, I definitely am not opposed to that. It's just in what context, right? Um, but uh, I highly recommend you guys give this one a shot. It's definitely a lot of fun. I think this would be another cool one in VR. Frame rate hit seems to be just minimal. It's very light on the frames, fun to fly. I think the stuttering that we were seeing has to do with the scenery and just Microsoft Flight Simulator being Microsoft Flight Simulator. Unfortunately, we all know that we still run into a lot of those issues. Um, but uh, all in all, this is a great aircraft. I'm really impressed with it. Again, it has a standard Garmin navigation system, so you can do your flight plans uh, and still have a good time in a jet like this. Uh, it'll be really cool when we start seeing some air-to-air -air refueling capability and uh, being able to use the refueling drogues with the boom. Uh, I think this will be a lot of fun. As always, guys, let me know what you think of this aircraft and what your personal experience is, of, is with it, of course. Um, stay safe and healthy, and I will see you all in